Hey hi guys this is Vishal. In this tutorial I'm gonna talk about what is Mule ESP, what are the advantages of Mule ESP and how it is superior from the old traditional integration platforms. So before going to the actual discussion if you haven't subscribed my channel so please do, do click on subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get updated with my latest videos. So before jumping directly to the Mule ESP let's understand what is ESP. Well, ESP stands for Enterprise Service Bus. It's an architecture with a set of protocols and rules to allow you to integrate your numerous applications. The core concept of the ESP is that it establishes a communication layer between your applications so that it enables each application to talk to the bus. This decouples the system from each other and permit them to connect without having any dependency or knowledge of other applications. ESP makes all traditional point-to-point -point integration go away. We'll talk about later what is point-to-point -point integration and how it is being replaced by new integration platforms. It also reduces the time to market to introduce new changes into an application. And this is the main benefit that's why ESP is catching a lot of attention by many organizations. Now understand what is Mule ESP. So, Mule is the lightweight Java-based ESP platform. It enables nimble integration of existing systems irrespective of the technology and platform they are running on. It manages all the transaction between applications by exchanging a data message which can be of any format like XML, JSON, and so. The best point of Mule ESP is that it doesn't impose any kind of design constraints on your applications. Mule does fit to a scenario where you, there is a requirement of applications to be loosely coupled and highly scalable so that whenever application experience a lot of volumes of volumes then you can scale your applications up and down whenever there is a need. Next point is, is Mule is a completely component based architecture so that's why it allows us to reuse their components significantly. And in this case, you don't need to write any kind of a mule specific code or do some extra changes while reusing their components. You just create a component which is very, which is as per your need and make it generic so that you can use it anytime whenever there is a need. Now let's look at how mule ESB architecture is superior from the traditional point to point integration architecture. So, point-to-point -point integration is nothing but the direct connectivity between your application without any middle layer between them. Let's understand one scenario here. Suppose in an organization there is a backend application and it's nothing but a core banking application which generates or handles multiple activities every day like account opening, closing, loan processing, loan disbursement and many and other transactions like the real-time money transfer transactions and it generates hundreds of records or transactions every day of the customers. Now, company had decided to bring transparency into the process so that customer can track their transaction on real time. In order to do, do that, they have developed a call center or tech support application handled by operation folks to ask, answer customer queries. This system needs access to a data generated by backend application so here comes the requirement of an application and they have fixed it using point-to-point -point integration. Over a time, company has launched a customer-facing portal where customers can log in into their profiles and can track their transactions themselves. Again, to connect back-end source, they have ended up creating a one more direct, direct connectivity after several customization in their applications. Now, the company is thinking about launching a mobile application so that customer can launch, can check their, their transaction easily on their mobile applications. So here comes again the need to pull the data from the backend sources and it will again need a direct connectivity between the data source. So eventually they end up creating the complex network of point-to-point -point integrations which or in the future, which over the time becomes almost difficult to handle and monitor. Now, 
Let's take the same case and where mule comes to the rescue and solve our problem and this solve our problem by forming a communication layer between these applications and make these all applications talk to the mule infrastructure and the mule will pull the data from the data source and feed it to them so that complexity of application has reduced significantly. Capabilities of mule ESB first point is message routing here name itself says about its functionality it does routing of a data filtering based on the conditions aggregation of the data and rearrange, rearranging it based on the content and the conditions service creation and hosting it allows us to expose and host a reusable service using a lightweight mule esp container and, and, and also it is possible to scale it up and down whenever you experience a high volume in your applications Third one is the data transformation. Data transformation is nothing but the transformation of the data from one format to the another format. Let's take if one application only accepts the XML format and another application which only talks with JSON format. So there is a need of a data transformation when there is transformation between them. So data transformation does the, ta the task of exchanging the data regardless of the message and format and whatever the protocols we are using. This is the core requirement for most integration. It is necessary to ensure that one application is intelligible or readable to the other application. Last one is the service mediation. Service mediation does job of separating the services and its business logic from It's nothing but keeping your message uh, structure and independent and separate from the business logic the application is running. Now let's look at what is the mule message structure. Now here on the left hand side you can see you can see the structure of a mule message. It is totally wrapped under a mule message object. This mule message passes through the application via one or more mule, mule flows. It carries the data in the, under the applications which is used to talk with other applications. Now as you can see mule message basically consists of two main parts. One is a header and second is a payload. Header is nothing but the metadata of the message while payload is the actual business matches which you are carrying on. The metadata of the message is represented by two properties. One is called inbound property and another is the outbound properties. Inbound properties are immutable properties and it is automatically generated by the message sources. It cannot be scrambled or tampered by a user for use by any user. The scope of the inbound properties is only limited to a flow. So when the message passes from one flow to the another flow, all the inbound properties of the previous flow will not follow to the next flow and it will be disappear in the same flow itself. Outbound property contains metadata similar to that of inbound properties with some differences. These properties are mutable properties and can be set during the course of flow by user or mute. And unlike inbound properties, outbound properties can be passed from one flow to the another flow by using message transformers. Third part of the message object is nothing but the variable. Variables are a user-defined metadata about a message, and they have they have a three main there are three main types of variables, and it depends on the scope of that variables. First is a flow variable which exists only till a flow. Second is the session variables which is which is uh, visible across the application and second is a record variable which is which is used especially in case of batch processing. Attachments and exception payloads are these are the extra data of a mule object which is not necessary to appear every time under a mule message object. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll explain how to install Mule Runtime and AnyPoint Studio and we'll also build a sample application on it. Thank you.